Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 97. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to hit that subscribe button, whether you're listening on YouTube or Apple Music or Spotify. And be sure to check us out at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com. My guest for this episode is Augie Stein Nielsen, also known as Glam. He is the front man for the Norwegian glam metal act, Wigwam. The band got their start in the early 2000s, but they're seeing a resurgence since the appearance of their 2010 song, Do You Want to Taste It, appeared as the theme of the HBO Max program, Peacemaker, starring John Cena. The band had actually broken up in 2013. They did a reunion album in 2021 to kind of test the water, see how things were. But once Do You Want to Taste It appeared in The Peacemaker, things started to blow up for the band. They're seeing a huge resurgence in uh, popularity and interest in their music. And they're going to be touring in the United States for the first time and Australia for the first time. They have a new album set for release on February 10th called Out of the Dark through Frontiers Music. It's their seventh studio album. We're going to talk about that and the tour and more. So here's vocalist Augie Stein Nielsen, a.k.a. Glam, of the band Wigwam. If I knew absolutely nothing about Wigwam, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, it's um, it's a cross between glam rock and heavy metal and, uh, you know, the normal uh, hard rock style. You know, it's uh, it's uh, big anthems, big guitars, and, uh, and with a flash. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we, we're we're a positive band, and we we're a positive band, and we like like to entertain people. So we we're more into entertain, entertainment than you know the doom gloom black stuff. So uh, yeah, we're positive guys. <laughs> Absolutely, and you have a album coming out on February tenth called Out of the Dark. It's your seventh studio album. It's on Frontiers Music. Let's talk a little bit about the songs. Um, I cool. feel like Out of the Dark, which has been released as a single, is sort of a theme for the band. Yeah, especially at this time in our career, after the pandemic, the Never Never Say Die album, and, you know, having a pretty rough comeback, you might say. Uh, and then suddenly we were out of the dark and uh, into the light with the Peacemaker success. And, you know, but I tell you, it's been a bit hard times and now too with the you know experiencing the the how hard it is to get into the US to play you know with the <laughs> shit that is going on with uh working visas and stuff you know it's chaotic but we were we we're finally coming in April now so yeah out of the dark positive thing even though it's about domestic violence oh okay the whole so, song, yeah. It's a song written by John and me, and we, we wrote the song together and the lyrics together, and we had to sit down before writing the song and we talked about him getting out of, out of his relationship and his kind of a tough breakup and uh, talked about, you know, the, the thing with, with, with the relationships, you know, when you end it, it's, it's a reason for ending it, and, you know, then you have to think positive, I mean, life should should become better without the person that actually you couldn't live with so that's a positive positive thing and we got into you know a, um, a friend of ours uh, that used to be in a domestic violent uh, relationship and and um certainly the whole song turned in that, that direction with you know <laughs> how to to um how to escape and to i mean to get away from it okay uh, High and Dry is your follow-up single. If you want to talk a little bit about the meaning behind that song. Yeah, that's a song that I wrote uh, uh, after the Peacemaker success. Uh, we thought we we would probably be better off having some 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 songs that were weren't that dark, uh, a bit more, you know, in the same same uh, style as you know. Do you want to taste it? So I wrote this song, and it's about you know, um, about it's actually about revenge. I mean, about people that don't want you to do good, people that envy you. And um, the best way to treat them is to have make sure you have a good life. Make sure you have success. Make sure life is good. 
and uh, it's pretty hard for him to take. But then you can smile all the way to the bank, and you can smile all the way when, when he's <laughs> doing great. <laughs> it's it's really hurtful to them. I mean, it's it's the best way of getting back at people that have done you wrong. Make sure you have a great life. Did you have a lot of people telling you that Wigwam wasn't really going to make it? I'm I'm guessing from this song. Did you have people that, <laughs> that doubted you? I mean, you plugged away for a long time, and all of a sudden, boom, you exploded. Yeah, it's not only about Wigwam. It's it's more more about you know my personal experience. I mean, I have people in my in my my circuit. I mean, that never really wanted me to succeed, or you know, even people in the family being kind of you know not supportive. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, and it, and it also even though this this story is about a relationship, it can be that too when somebody leaves you and you you find someone better and they come back to you and say, you know, should I really made a mistake? Sorry, too late. <laughs> It's great. It's a good feeling. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, do you have a third single uh, planned when the album drops? Yep, the third single. Actually, we 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 never, the band couldn't make up their minds um, together about the single. So we sent everything to some guys in the U.S., some radio guys, and they chose the, the next two singles for us. So they chose uh, High and Dry, um, and they chose the third one, and it's going to be... Uh, Forevermore, and it's actually track number three, isn't it? That we're talking about now. Yeah, so perfect timing. <laughs> it's a it's Tron's song, uh, and that's more of a theme, you know, more like the Viking theme, you know, and and the song itself, um, it's it's got more 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 kind of pretty maids eclipse vibes to it than you know the the typical. Uh, the wigwam song, you know, because of the Celtic, Celtic melodies and the uh, the whole feel of the song. But uh, I think it's a great song, and it's a uh, one for all, all for one song, you know. But us getting ready to go to war for rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I think of wigwam, I think of the song "Uppercut Shazam." It's playful. It's just rock and roll. It's just something uh, to to have fun with uppercut to Sam? yeah yeah it's 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 actually one of my favorites on the album even though it's not i i don't I, my take on it is not very you know it's very aggressive you know it's uh it's the aggressive side of wigwam this is a song that tron had written you know riff for it and i brought it back home and and I had just been watching the CNN, you know, when when the Russians uh, were inviting invading um, Ukraine, and I was so fucking furious. I brought put on this song, and uh, the 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 melody and the lyrics all came crashing down. Uh, so it, it's about you know being that s small kind of nation that you can also be a theme for you know in the you know no normal normal life you know with people that that to, don't expect you to get back at them but hey almost like david and goliath you know so so obviously wigwam is seeing a huge resurgence by having uh do you want to taste it appear in the peacemaker was there any pressure going into this album to be like we got to write a song like that. Are we going to do something like that to kind of keep the thing going? No, it really wasn't. We, we decided uh, when we, when we wrote our comeback album, never say die, what we were going to be like uh, in the modern, t modern days and what the band, band would sound, sound like, but you know, uh, after, so we, so we started in the same direction with this new album, you know, you can hear that on songs like Uppercut Shazam, uh, out of the dark, some band songs, you know, very hard and heavy. And but you know, when the peacemaker thing happened, um, I, I, I said to the band, you know, we, we, we should we, we really should have something on it that is a bit more light as well. I mean, people's first people, the people that heard us for the first time through the peacemaker song, we want them to 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 kind of 
recognize the band, <laughs> you know? So High and Dry was kind of my take on that. Like, let's do something more light and maybe in the same same, uh, same beat, you know? Uh, but we only wanted that as kind of to spice up the album a bit with, with some more some more happy songs because well, that's the direction and the, the title is Out of the Dark. So it's it's a lighter album, even though it's some glimpses are pretty heavy and uh, of course some of the themes are are pretty aggressive as well. Uh, but we need to have some some sort of songs that we were, you know, going to do live in the same spirit that we have within the band. Like, for example, Bad Luck Chuck is going to be a great song for the live shows. I mean, humorous, funny lyrics in a tongue-in-cheek thing, and you can almost, you can close your eyes and you can you can actually, you can actually experience how that song is going to become and it turn out live, you know? <laughs> By all accounts, you, you mentioned earlier that Wigwam has had their struggles. In 2013, you guys broke up, and your reunion album was kind of a, hey, let's see if we can get along and keep going. And you were a little apprehensive that things were going to go on uh, after that. And then here you have this renewed interest in Wigwam. Was it... Um, did it kind of bring the band closer together where you had been fractured in a couple spots? Yeah, kind of, because, you know, it was pretty, it looked pretty dark for us after, you know, Never Say Die, especially coming from the pandemic situation, you know, when uh, it was hard to get gigs. And, you know, when the, when our Norwegian agent decided to, 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 to break up with us without us knowing it, because they didn't see, they couldn't see the potential of us being in the Peacemaker, you know, series. And so, of course, if things are running smooth, it's, it's easier to get along as well. But but these days, I mean, I, I think we have our conversations, our communication is much better nowadays than before. We have a couple of guys in the band, they have daytime jobs. And it's, it's, it's easy for them to say that, yeah, we can do that festival, we can do that show, you know. Uh, if, if it doesn't pay well... Uh, the, the two bands that are living out of being musicians have to turn down other offers that uh, that uh, is actually paying our bills. And uh, if we can't pay our bills, then then we can't do this. Uh, then we do other stuff. So as long as Wigwam can can uh, can pay our bills and make sure that we we can live as well, it's it's okay. And, and these days, the guys in the band understand it. It was, uh, we had a harder time back in, for example, 2007, when three three other guys suddenly told me that, yeah, now we're going to take a break. Or are we? Yeah, we're going to take a break. Yeah, for, for how long? We don't know. The first guy who is interested in getting back together again gives the other guy a call. So I said, yeah, but it's, it's my daytime job. I, I, so I'm going to sit around. My boss is telling me, you no longer have a job. Uh, and there's no other reason for for that happening, then we are tired. So what am I to do? Now we don't know. Okay, so I started my own uh, my own solo career again, and I I produced a Queen show that I still have, by the way. Uh, we've been we've been doing that. That's been more or less my my daytime job doing this Queen show in Norway. It's been a massive success. But but I started up that, and we were booked like for one and a half year making great money and then suddenly the guys came to me and said now we're ready yeah but you see you just you just left and i was left alone to to make sure that i had some income and now it has taken off so i'm i can't do anything in in a year maybe so uh, sorry to to tell you that i tried to tell you that so you know so, <laughs> but um and they were then pissed at me for not being ready whenever they were ready but now they see the the bigger picture of course so and that's that's maybe have matured a bit <laughs> hopefully hopefully we all have <laughs> yeah so, we're still small kids that's right and for those listening that don't know the peacemaker or peacemaker is a superhero tv show on hbo max starring 
John Cena. It's based on the DC comic character. Did you submit the song to director James Gunn or did or was he a Wigwam fan? He was. And the the the, the fun part is we received a, a mail from from some sync dudes in the US, you know, that re- that requested um uh, two songs in my dreams and do you want to taste it and they wanted you know the stems the layers you know some guitar parts and stuff uh, they wanted to play around with it and they couldn't tell us what for so we thought maybe it was a commercial or something maybe it was mcdonald's who wanted you know do you really want to do you really want to taste it yeah of course you know so that would have been cool you know uh, or some other you know you know fast food chain <laughs> but then they told us what it was what it was all about and we were you know that was that was really cool to hear you know, i mean that it was james gone it was you know the the new series you know the spin-off from from uh suicide squad and stuff like that so and especially when we heard that uh, do you want to taste it was being you know chosen for for the in, intro section you know it's like that made a great deal for us, and of course, without without Peacemaker, uh, we 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 wouldn't have found you know uh, Arm Entertainment in the U.S. and we we hadn't been applying for working visas at all. Now we have a we have a market down there, people that wants to see see the band, and and uh, hopefully we'll 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 tour a lot in the U.S. You're actually going to be in the uh, U.S. this week, correct, for the Rock Island Fest. Yeah, we were supposed to, but we still have no working visa. So we, our only, our only, our only way of going there now to do the Rock Island is to, to, to travel with, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, tourist visas, and to do that, uh, then we would be banned for ten years, and we want to play in the U.S. So, so I'm sad to say we're not coming over for that one. Uh, but we have postponed the whole whole uh, tour for april so we'll, we'll still still be doing you know uh, whiskey go go and tower theater in fresno and a lot of other places and and we're also playing with winger in, in some places st louis or something yep and uh yeah the whole april uh we'll play as many gigs as possible so that's gonna be a great thing i'm gonna and the, the last gig on that that leg of the tour will be the monsters of rock cruise so, Yo. and this is your first time playing in America with Wigwam, right? Yep, I've only done one gig in America before, one one gig only, and that was with Ammunition in in outside of Chicago. That's the only time I played in the US. So uh, that's uh, that's going to be something. And we're doing our very first Australian tour next week, we're going to Melbourne next week. We were supposed to to go straight from America to to uh, to uh, to Australia but you know the, the visas are heavy shit man <laughs> I, it, I mean it's, it's harder to be a European band trying to play in the US than American bands coming over to Europe and uh, you know at some point maybe that's going to change because I know the e- EU now is is talking about changing changing uh, you know the uh, you know, the, the, yeah, no, the, it's gonna probably be harder for American bands to play in the in Europe, <laughs> unless there's an an agree an agreement coming up that will make it easier for both parts. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because we are going to create jobs in the U.S. for American citizens as well. We need people on the lights in this front of house, and we need. People to make, you know, to 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 make the merch. Are you working on anything else in your downtime from Wigwam and the Queen Show? I mean, are you talking another Ammunition album? Are you doing something else, maybe with Frontiers? Yep, I'm. Uh, I'm constantly working. I just signed a deal yesterday with a uh, with a company here in Norway, Arctic Rights, as a as a songwriter. So obviously, I'm going to write a lot of songs for other artists as well. Just signed off with a great artist in Japan who who uh, that we pitched a song to, uh, Yagoya Kamoshuchi or something. <laughs> I'm gonna do it in Japanese, and I'm constantly writing, so I have a lot of songs that are gonna come off, uh, come on a, a solo album. I don't know if about the situation in in ammunition right now, but 
solo, I'm gonna probably go go in that that direction, doing more more the you know ammunition style of albums. You know, um, I've done. I've done so many, you know, uh, singer songwriter albums as a solo artist, and that that all came off from me being in a band called Wigwam. And whenever I needed to release a solo album, I really didn't want to compete with with the mother band, the, the mothership, so to speak. Uh, so I needed to do something else. I wanted to do the th- stuff that I couldn't do in my regular band. So. Um, I did a different kind of uh, style, you know, and um, but but now I'm, I'm I'm done with that. I for my my future for my future uh, solo albums is going to be rock and roll because that's that's who I am. I'm I'm, I'm a guy who grew up to doing hard rock music, you know. So and now I'm going to do. Of course, it's not going to probably not going to be as heavy as wigwam and uh but i'm gonna use some of the guys that i used in ammunition and uh, it's gonna be very close to the stuff that i did with that band and i'm uh, i'm gonna do a big musical in norway now called we were rocky the, the queen musical in uh oslo spectrum i'm gonna be uh the character buddy i'm gonna sing uh <laughs> innuendo in- innuendo as the opening song and then you know it's so cool. I'm doing doing it with uh, Ben Adams from A1, yeah, the English English um, boy band. <laughs> and I just released an album with uh, John Norum, one of my favorite guitar players. I mean, singer in his touring band. So uh, we are also looking out for 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 some uh, some tours. He wants to do you know the full circle thing, you know, with all his songs from from back in the days. So. He's gonna do some vocals, and I'm gonna do, of course, do the vocals that you know Glenn Hughes did, and a lot of his his other singers, and of course, the the three songs that I have that I did vocals for on his new album. I had no idea you were playing with John Norum. That's awesome! I, oh, uh, I, he just released he just released his new album uh, just before Christmas, and uh, I, I was uh, the singer in uh, the, on the the third what was the third single, yeah. So uh, it's been great working with him. I started to work with John after the Wigwam breakup. We 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 formed a band called Nordic Beast with uh, Jon Norum from Europe and Mickey D, then from Motorhead, now in Scorpions, and we had uh, um, Hal Patino from King Diamond on bass guitar, and the keyboard player was uh, Mick Mikhail from Europe. Had a great time. But that was just when when uh, Lemmy started to to become pretty sick, and he, and I think Mickey thought, you know, what am I gonna do with my life? So he started this band, and uh, then suddenly he he was requested as a drummer in in Scorpions, and then off he went. <laughs> it's like yeah, more private planes, you know. So he didn't have time. So. Well, I love Norm's version of "Still the Night," and I I'm sure that you will do that song justice live. That's actually one of the songs that we're gonna do. Uh, it's, it's a killer, killer, killer set list. I tell you that. Well, Agi, those are all the questions I have for you today. Uh, the latest album by Wigwam is Out of the Dark. It comes out on February tenth. Frontiers Music, great album. I am happy for all the great luck and praise that has come your way recently. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll see you on tour in April. Absolutely, I'll find a way to get out to one of those. Stops. Yeah, <laughs> let's have a pint. Once again, I want to thank Aggie Stein Nielsen, a.k.a. Glam, for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out the latest album by Wigwam called Out of the Dark. It drops on February 10th through Frontiers Music. Head over to your favorite music streaming platform. Check out what's available. If you like what you hear, buy a physical copy. Support the artist. For all things Wigwam, head over to their Facebook page, facebook.com slash wigwam.official. I also want to thank John Freeman of Freeman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I'll see you again soon.